Good morning, everybody. It's Truck Dog here with a 4L80E for a very good customer of mine, Chris Kemper. His son's turbo square body, I, be I believe it's a square body. His son's turbo truck is, uh, they're gonna upgrade the power level. And uh, they, they put what I had previously sold them to the test. And um, just, just a standard uh, 750 horse uh, setup. And um, it looks like, I, I tossed the stuff, but it looks like they were suffering from what I believe is um, oil starving. And I don't know if it's from launching hard or talking with some other people people are starting to think that maybe the the 4L80E can just move enough fluid that there's fluid up in the gear train uh, as it goes into second gear, even if you're not launching super hard. Um, I've spoken to the guys at SD Concepts and they said that they were noticing problems with second gear clutches burning up as soon as they were going uh, 17 in 60 foot, which is, uh, not leaving hard at all. That is, that's just sticky tires in a soft launch, really. Um, so, uh, I'm wondering if it's just, uh, you know, sucking the pan dry, essentially. Or, uh, another friend of mine has told me that Jake, of Jake's performance, is under the impression that the fluid is there and it's not sloshing, but the Dacron filters that are stocked to these just can't uh, keep up with the volume and so they end up starving that way. So uh, that's why he offers his TH400 uh, screen filter kit, which I think is a great, great little thing. I wish I had thought that up first um, and it's not super expensive. I think it's like, $60 for the adapter, uh, a little standoff, um, and a filter, which, you know, a filter is like maybe 15 bucks, but there, I have, I have played with several configurations of, of stock things, and there's really no other way to do it besides the way that he's done it, which is have a machined piece and a separate little machined standoff. So I think it's a fair price for what he is asking. Um, so consider consider that. It also moves the pickup back about three or four inches. So if fluid slosh is a problem, there you go, two birds and one stone. You move the pickup farther towards the back. Um, I've got some material on the way to make another rear pickup tube. Uh, a customer of mine wants one and I'm going to make another one for a spec unit, for a really nice spec unit that I'm building up. And um, I think, I have mentioned that I have moved to these ATI Vasco shafts. Um, ATI is sourcing these this Vasco material for a TH400 main shaft. And a TH400 main shaft allows you to change some of the lubrication uh, of the of a of the 4L80E to lube front to back. Um, which is, in my mind is a better setup. I think the early style lube system was more advanced than the later style lube system. Um, it just kept the planets alive. It kept the bushings alive better. Um, so you can convert over to that by using a late style output shaft with the hole in it. Uh, some changes to the bushings and uh, a hollow main shaft. These Vasco shafts theoretically should be good to about 1400 horsepower. So that's quite the power upgrade from uh, a 300M, which I think the 300M main shaft really kind of just puts you in the same uh, power category as a good quality stock TH400 main shaft. The TH400 main shaft uh, goes to 900 plus horsepower without problem. And uh, that's that's been proven time and time again. So 
Uh, that's, again, that's the hollow TH400 main shaft, not the solid 4L80E main shaft. My theory on why the solid 4L80E main shafts don't hold up is that the material quality was not quite as good. And then the heat treating, which they relied on to get the material as strong as they did, uh, doesn't have a chance to fully penetrate into the material uh, like it would a hollow shaft. I mean, with a hollow shaft, that heat is going through the very center of it and it is normalizing throughout the shaft. Um, if you see a main shaft break, you will know, uh, well, this, this doesn't have it, but normally there is a groove that holds a snap ring here and then a little edge at the end of the splines where it's necked down. And that's generally where it breaks is where it necks down for the splines to butt up against the end of the shaft. Um, so another thing to be aware of is these Vasco main shafts. They don't have a, uh, a retainer for the little circlip that goes on the end here. It's kind of a press fit into these splines and that's good, that's nice. You want that because uh, it, it, it still allows you to drop that thing down in there and you know that no matter which way this uh, main shaft is turning, uh, that the splines are nice and tight and engaged in there. And, and same on the forward hub side, the forward clutch hub side. Ideally, it's a nice slip bit so you can assemble it, but not so loose as that it, it rocks around. Um, the tighter those splines fit, the stronger it's going to be. It's going to make it like a one piece deal. So yeah, that is just uh, a little bit of information on what parts I'm using and some musings on, uh, on lubrication circuits. We'll catch you guys after a while. Bye.